second. The first thing you'll notice about a modern LCD screen is that it's not only the active line of pixels that retains brightness, it's the entire image, so you can actually see the full image as each scan line passes down the screen. This is every frame of the start-up sequence on an Xbox One. I also recorded myself playing a game of Halo. Nothing will make you feel worse about your performance than watching your lousy aim in slow-mo. Look at that. It's crazy to think that when you're playing Halo, this is actually what is happening on your TV. If only you could see at this speed, your aim would be incredible. It honestly makes me feel bad when I fall asleep watching TV, knowing that this TV is doing all this intensive work, changing literally tens of millions of pixels every second, and there's no one there watching it. Here's a fun fact, the same applies to an iPhone, except it's in portrait mode. So if you're watching a video in landscape mode on your iPhone, you're actually getting updates from left to right, or right to left, depending on which way you flipped it. And that just proved to me that you can't see the refresh direction with your naked eye. Because I had no idea whenever I was watching a YouTube video on my iPhone that the screen was updating in a completely different direction. I'm not sure if this is the case for all smartphones, but it's certainly the case on an iPhone 7 Plus, which is what I filmed this on. So we've talked about one illusion of TVs, the illusion of movement. The second illusion I want to talk about is the illusion of color. For this next part, I'm going to need a second camera. Here's one. That's you. Hello, you. So, in order to film this screen extremely close, I have to set my focus at the minimum possible distance, so it's sort of like right here now. Set to my minimum focus, as I slowly move towards the screen it becomes sharper, and you will then, at the last minute, see a very odd looking pattern. And what you're seeing there is an effect caused by the camera, this camera, trying to resolve individual pixels on the surface of this screen. As I push further forward, the effect disappears and everything goes out of focus. That's because I'm now beyond the minimum focal distance of this lens, which is about, well, it's about there. Not close enough. In order to get closer, I'm going to need a macro lens. Here's one. <laughs> As I approach the white and everything starts to become in focus, you can see that white isn't so white anymore. It looks like I have to go closer even than that. Thankfully, I can go all the way to five times magnification. Now one thing from this point, I am definitely gonna need a tripod because there's no way my arms are sturdy enough to hold this in place. But uh, I'll just ease it in just to show you the level of magnification we're talking about now. Well, it's close, it's a different story altogether. I'm gonna get a tripod. Here's one. What a mission this is. All right, let's see what we can do here. We're so close up right now that I can actually disturb this image by blowing on the lens. <laughs> We're now looking at the sub-pixel level. A pixel is made up of three sub-pixels, red, green, and blue, RGB, you may have heard that before. And this creates the illusion of different colors by dimming and brightening different sub-pixels to different intensities this screen can create the illusion of literally millions of different colors. When all three are lit to full brightness, you get white. When all three dim, you go through gray all the way down to black. So if green dims away and red and blue are still lit, then you go into magenta, purple, that sort of area, and that's how the colors are made. So every time on your TV, you're looking at a white image, you're looking at tons of blue, green, and red lights. They're just so small, they look like white to your eye. Before you get white, red, green, and blue blurs 